So hello and welcome everyone to the CCSA talk. It is a pleasure to welcome you all. For those who are joining us for the first time, CCSA, CCSA Talks is a platform created by the Center for Critical Studies in Architecture, a research cluster between the Department of Art History of the Gate University Frankfurt, the Department of Architecture of the Technical University Darmstadt, and the Deutsches Architekturmuseum in Frankfurt. CCSA Talks presents current research projects, publications, collaborative studies with guests. My name is Daniela Ortiz de Santos, and I'm an assistant professor of architecture history at the Art History Department of the Goethe University. And since 2018, I have served as one of the coordinators of the Center for Critical Studies in Architecture, uh, CCSA, we call it. So tonight, I'm delighted to welcome two excellent young scholars, Isabel Rodriguez de la Rosa from the Universidad Politecnica de Madrid, and Javier Navarro de Pablo at from the Universidad de Sevilla. And the title they suggested for our talk was Superimposed Readings Over Territory to Spanish Case Studies on Heritage Resignification. In this talk, Isabel and Javier are going to introduce two case studies related to the so-called resignification of the Spanish cultural heritage, as the title really suggests while Isabel looks at the transformation of Spanish cultural sector during the autarky period of Franco's regime, Javier explores, he'll tell us more, the dynamics of the occupation of public space through rituals, festivals, events, and happenings in the city of Sevilla. So as they, their talks will serve as point of departure to discuss you know, methodological approach, specific objects in their context, and of course understands the transformation of the environment as a phenomenon that goes beyond its, its physical modification. So a few words on our guest, Isabel. Isabel Rodriguez de la Rosa is an architect and pre-doctoral fellow at the Department of Architectural Composition of the Madrid School of Architecture at the Politecnica de Madrid. She's a member of the Cultural Landscape Research Group, and her doctoral thesis deals with the environmental, social, and cultural transformations of the landscape. It is tied to industrial developments revolving around the current narratives of landscape and heritage critical studies. In 2022, so uh, since October, or late September, she has been an academic guest at the Center for Critical Studies in Architecture. We are very, very glad to have uh, um, Isabel with us. And as well, Javier, Javier Navarro de Pavlos is also an architect, an architect, trained architect, master in architecture and historical heritage, and master in urbanism, planning, and urban design by the Universidad, Universidad de Sevilla. He is currently developing his doctoral thesis as well at the Universita, Universidad de Sevilla and the Universidad de, uh, de Roma La Sapienza on ephemeral occupations in public space and the potential of traditional expressions as a matter of contemporary creation. I'm very curious about the title as well. And uh, well, um, Javier obtained national degree award and scientific publications award in two different Spanish biennial architecture and urbanism. So I'm really looking forward to have you both here and uh, I'll pass the word to first um, Isabel. Very welcome. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen. I think you can see it now. That's true. Okay. So, uh, well, mm, thank you very much, Daniela, for this uh, wonderful introduction and, and for the opportunity to be here tonight in this, in this forum and with so many familiar faces around. So uh, this is just uh, fantastic for me. And I'm also very pleased to share this space today with, with Javier Navarro and with, as you will see, his remarkable research project. 
And well, as Daniela introduced, I think that our projects go hand in hand, not so much uh, perhaps from their specific subject matter, but from a way of thinking about the built environment and trying to understand from a point of view, certain um, functional, social and occupational logics of today. So uh, without further delay, I begin with my presentation for today entitled The First Reward Battle, the Otaki Transformation of the Spanish Agri-Industry, uh, which as Daniela said, is part of my ongoing doctoral research. My intention for today is to um, fly somehow part of the process of transformation of the agricultural industry in Spain in the years frame in this autarkic period of Franco's regime uh, in Spain, that is with many possible interpretation, the first 20 years um, of the dictatorship. And my intention is to do so in a downscaling from the conceptualization of part of the situation at the national level uh, to the domestic detail, we could perhaps say, of the creation of a peasant class molded according to the then rallying ideal of Christian autarky and trying to observe in this path some of these implications, both past and, and present. So to do so, uh, I would like to start from the current situation um, through these images published in 2020 by Ana Amado and Andres Patiño. And this example Also, is a good part of the current essence, the original and pristine environments of nature, of nature, and which, however, are the result of intense human action uh, on the natural environment in search of maximum productivity through a process of anthropic redesign of the territory, uh, and that has occurred in recent history of Spain. Uh, this process was promoted by the implementation of an autarkic interventionist policy during the first decades of Franco's regime and gave rise to an intense transformation of the Spanish countryside. As we shall see now, this transformation was physical, of course, uh, but it also involved a transformation in the, in the functional and socio-cultural aspects associated with the territory. So uh, going back uh, in time from these images, we can find what is probably one of the most important starting points in this process of larger scale transformation of the Spanish countryside. Uh, that is, uh, well, in 1937, uh, Franco uh, stated, and I quote, we must fight the battle of wheat, the first battle of the reward, as important or more important than those fought in the vanguard. The national movement has set out to redeem the men and lands of Spain." End of quote. Uh, well, to this end, in August of that same year, still during the development of the, the Spanish Civil War, an organization called Servicio Nacional de Trigo, that would be in English, uh, the National Wheat Service, was created in the territories dominated by the uprising side. So the objective assigned to this organism was to all that the production and distribution of wet uh, and its byproducts, as well as other type of uh, cereals and, and legumes. So regulating their acquisition, mobilization and prices. Uh, that is to say the National Wheat Service, that is SNT for its acronym in Spain, was granted in the name of efficiency, the exclusivity in the purchase and sale of cereals and legumes. First in the territories of the uprising side during the war and after the war through the all the national territory. So in this way, the SNT initiated a process of total control that went beyond control over the grain itself, but by extension provided control over the farmers, always monitoring their productivity and assigning them forced production quotas, as you can see in this in these graphs. In the same way. Uh, this control also fell on the producers of the derived materials and other people involved in the process as, um, and, and also, of course, on the territory itself. Uh, this territory became a kind of laboratory in which its redesign and optimization was sought in order to make the best use of the resources it contained or it could produce in this case. 
So through these actions, the SNP encouraged or restricted the sowing of certain products and carried out uh, actions aimed at intensifying agricultural productivity by, for example, uh, organizing land, mechanizing processes, increasing irrigated areas, making use of certain fertilizers compulsory, or selecting and producing different types of grain and improved seeds. So in this cereal uh, production control project, the SNP divided the territory into 150 wheat growing regions, classifying them, uh, as you can see in the case of this map, by means of colors, according to the quality or efficiency of the cultivated areas. So once the territory was structured in this way and, and to be able to exercise an efficient control over national cereal, um, cereal production, the SNP needed a modern uh, management and storage structure that would allow you to adequately conserve surplus production. So for this purpose, in the first instance, uh, private granaries were occupied while the so-called national network of silos and granaries was developed in a matter of a few years. Uh, which is in the first 15 years had built with uh, exponential growth, as you can see in the, in the graph, more than 500 units throughout the national territory, including uh, granaries and silos of different types. As for the territorial organization of this network, of course, its location was by no means a random matter. The network was organized in four levels. First, a basic uh, network of granaries, generally not mechanized, uh, that was for quick grain reception and expedition operations. Second, a network of silos called reception silos with a basic mechanization and whose mission was to quickly absorb the grain in the proximity of the production sites and keep it until it sales or it's transferred to the next level of the network, which was uh, the transit and reserve silos with greater capacity than the previous one, fully mechanized and located in strategic points that allow uh, large quantities of grain to be reserved for periods when they were needed. And finally, completing the transit uh, silos were the port silos intended for import and export operations and equipped with facilities capable of uh, loading and unloading grain from ships, storing it and sending it by rail or road to the interior of the country. So observing this territorial organization of 60 years ago, it is interesting to see how today the current territorial transport and agricultural use logic continue to respond to this model, observing in a simple way um, it's linked with the, for example, the structuring transport lines and with the territories currently dedicated to agricultural production. So, well, for the second part of this brief presentation, I would like in order to go deeper into this case of the transformation of the Spanish agriculture to make a downscaling from this national framework to the province of Badajoz, which since 1952 was the protagonist of an intense a process of physical and socio-cultural transformation carried out through the construction of a new um, kind of agricultural structure. Um, to obtain an idea of the extent of this transformation process in Badajoz, it is enough to compare two aerial photos taken only 20 years apart to appreciate the physical transform area. Uh, this trace uh, that is nowadays so easily recognizable correspond almost exactly to one to the one initially proposed in the project that was carried out uh, for the transformation of the province. So uh, therefore, in a context in which uh, the country was slowly moving towards openness and towards the developmental period of the regime, uh, the Badajoz plan was nevertheless one of the clearest examples of autarkic, interventionist, and paternalist actions of the regime. The objective of the plan uh, was to improve the province's backward agricultural production and an income, and to tackle uh, like the social problems derived from precariousness and to promote its industrial development. And all of, all of these, um, was going to be done through the construction uh, and the control uh, of the natural environment. 
So in words of the, of the drafters of the project, this would be achieved, and I quote, through the unexploited wealth of the Guadiana, that is its main river, in such a way that the waters, uh, that the waters dominated by technique would turn the unproductive meadow in, into an emporium of wealth, end of quote. In this way, the plan converted an area of 115,000 hectares of dry lands, uh, that is to say of extensive farming, into an area of intensive farming through all of this through irrigation. So in order to achieve this emporium of wealth, the plan carried out seven main actions that I will simply name uh, with, uh, along with samples of its propaganda. So in the first, in the first place, uh, the flow of the Guadiana River was regulated at, as it passed through the area, building five main reservoirs. Uh, secondly, all the lands included in the plan were leveled and a dense network of canals, uh, siphons and irrigation ditches was created with a system of fluid gates that allowed total control over the system. Thirdly, the necessary labor force was provided by organizing the arrival of colonies from different parts of the country and building more than 40 new villages for their accommodation. Fourthly, the reforestation of large areas was promoted with the aim of both economic use and to protect the banks of the new reservoirs. Fifthly, the existing communication network was improved and expanded to be able to provide an outlet for the new agricultural products. Uh, sixthly, uh, new industries were founded not only in the physically transformed area, but also throughout the province to process the products obtained both in the irrigated areas and in the rest of the province. And in seventh and last place, the deficient electrification of the province was improved through the construction of hydroelectric power plants in the reservoirs built to cover the demand of the new urban, agricultural, and industrial settlements. Um, so at this point, already knowing all this process of all, the, all this process. And to face the last minutes of this presentation, I found of interest to perform like a spatial analysis of these actions to understand the magnitude, precision, and detail with which uh, the resign of the new landscape was carried out, uh, both in its territorial and social components. And for this, we will do it from this uh, territorial to the domestic scale that I mentioned at the beginning. So uh, starting from this territorial scale that we, we have already seen, if we approach one of the two main areas of the, of the action, in this case, the Vegas Altas, we can observe in this plan, uh, for example, the new dams, uh, the mosaic of the areas converted into irrigated lands, uh, the layouts of the new roads and railroads and the new colonization villages. This area was further subdivided also into sectors indicated here by Roman numerals in order to go down in a scale and start the design of, of each one of the sectors. In this case, if we approach this sector number uh, 10, we access a new plan that solves the mosaic resulting from the process of reparcelling the territory, which was followed by the detailed layout of the irrigation ditches drains and roads, and in relation to them, and taking into consideration the distances that the colonies would travel to the plots, the new town created from scratch. And if we continue this process of approaching, it is possible to make a new descent in this scale of design of the territory in which, for example, as you see in the left, over a photograph of the place, the imposed distribution of the property of the new town is presented defining each plot and assigning it to a specific colonist with names and last names and with a carefully selected profile. And so also the urban scale was reached with the design of the new colonization towns, a structure in all cases from a bar center where the civil and religious power converge. This scale of the design of the domestic space even included the load uh, of possessions and artifacts given to each of the colonists, who, as I said, had previously been selected according to the desired profile to inhabit these towns. 
This was so because an essential part of this project was the construction of a new rural society governed by the principles of Christian autarky. In this way, the PSN was presented as a figure through which the state would manage to redeem the Spanish land, providing the colonies with a space where they could raise the future generations that should continue their work. Uh, well, all this new design landscape was incorporated into a state rhetoric about the power of Spanish technique and engineering, at the same time that the state was reflected in the territory itself. So the transformation of this landscape and its colonization became a multipurpose tool at the service of the state, because the redistribution and settlement of a population that was linked to the place through an imaginary of promises of welfare and favorable future became the, the best way to dominate and govern the territory. So, well, that is as far as this story would go this, 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 this afternoon. Um, and I don't want to expand further because I think that we will have time to discuss many issues in the debate, but just to connect in some way with the beginning of my presentation, um, I would like to emphasize um, on considering relevant to talk about these issues today by introducing new perspectives and actors beyond the discourse of official historiography, among them, for example, the cultural, social, or material meanings, which open new paths to the resignification of heritage, in particular in complex situations when, for example, this one interpreting the heritage built in times uh, such as this one of two recent uh, dictatorships. But based on uh, new understandings of these landscapes and their origin, I think it may be possible to understand both their implications and their possible current or future sociocultural and uh, ecological consequences. So thank you very much. Javier, you are very welcome to just moving forward. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, first of all, I would like to, to thank the organizer of the CCSA talks, especially thanks to Daniela for her hospi hospitality and, and also Isabel for uh, the brilliant presentation uh, she has already done and, and also for her trust and, and her academic friendship. Uh, it's an honor for me to uh, be in here today and, and to share with all of you uh, this work. Uh, the ideas uh, I'm going to share with you today uh, are the result of five years of a study around the ephemeral occupation of the public space in Seville. And in this case, the, the aim is to demonstrate that ephemeral occupations, that despite being temporary, sometimes have a greater impact than the built architecture. It's also the aim to demo, the, the aim is to demonstrate uh, how each conscious occupation leaves a permanent mark or a permanent trace on the solid, on the solid city. And it has been mostly a cartographic work uh, with, as, as I said, no, with, the, with the aim of revealing these timeless and universal dynamics in the way that public space is occupied, trying to construct, to, to create a kind of panel of gestures and movements and traces in the same way or in a similar way as Avi Warburg did in his study uh, of the Florentine Renaissance. The methodology consists in analyze uh, the, the, the reports of local chroniclers and draw every ephemeral occupation of public space that were mentioned. From the, uh, going from the religious uh, procession to protest fairs or markets. The period of study covers eight uh, centuries from the 13th to, uh, to nowadays. Uh, and, and it's a huge period that 
I think that allows to compare different architectural, political, and social situation. Uh, the result at the end is an atlas of more than 500 ephemeral events that reveals a timeless formula for occupying public space. This timeless formula is based on the concept of a procession at the end. And the traces left, for example, by the 16th century religious processions and the marches in defense of the gay rights nowadays are at the end really, really similar from the point of view of the, of the urban shape. And this would reinforce the hypothesis that the, the formulas and gestures remain the same and what change is the meaning. We can see how uh, the symbolic load change by adapting to very similar forms uh, that remain unchanged. Among all the, uh, the Evis events, the most revered is the Semana Santa, the Holy Week. Here, uh, we see a recording of the same brotherhood at the end of the 19th century and another from this year. And we can see how similar both situations are. Uh, a representation of the passion of Christ crossing the, the, the streets, the presence of music bands with a particular attire, and a devout society. Like the rest of uh, local festivities, the Holy Week, uh, Holy Week has kept its form and most of its symbols, although these symbols obviously have been resignified by different powers from the Baroque to the contemporary thinking. Uh, Francisco, Francisco Franco, um, used the Catholic religion, as Isabel commented before, as an instrument of power, taking advantage also of the roots of Catholicism in Spain. Actually, in the south of Spain, in the south of the country, in Seville, the devotion was, uh, and still is, greater, greater than, than more uh, than the rest of the, of, the, of the country, and more also widespread. And, and in this religious manifestation, you could find anarchists, communists, socialists, Republican, Christian, Democrats, and also atheists participating in the same festivity. Uh, with the establishment of uh, the dictatorship and standardization of thought took place. And the aim, the aim of, of Franco was uh, to legitimize uh, power by constructing a mythical past. And liberal states have no past, uh, as we can see at the end of the, of the 19th century, uh, and uh, need to create leagues based on ceremonies that borrow elements from religion and so uh, many of their acts are taken directly from religious tradition. No? That this religious tradition before Franco's regime were transversal and allow the participation of all the society. Although the regime insists on emphasizing the fact that Spain, Spain was different from uh, other countries, the reality was that uh, it's a strategy of appropriating cultural and folkloric elements such as flamenco uh, as an instrument of the new order had already been tested uh, throughout Europe and was obviously nothing, nothing new. Spain obviously wasn't, wasn't different at all. Returning uh, to uh, religion, one, uh, of the most, um, one of the most important figures uh, of Holy Week in Holy Week together with Jesus Christ is the image of the Virgin Mary, who is even more popular than Christ himself, and came from the Mediterranean uh, devotion of a godness. The image of the Virgin is always protected, as you can see, by a sort of a minimal architectural unit known as a palio, and the appropriation of the dictatorship reached all these scales, including also elements such, such as the pallium that is not more than a kind of, of canopy. Here we see, we can see Franco living the Sevilla Civil Cathedral under a canopy. And every time he came to the city, he was equate with the Virgin Mary, to whom the characteristic, the characteristic also of pure, of pure and immaculate are attributed. And I'm going to 
to tell you briefly uh, about two specific cases of real signification of symbols by Franco. And the first one uh, uh, took place in 1936, just before the coup d'etat. For two years, the situation of, on the streets of Seville had been really unstable because of the anti-Republican parties had uh, tried to tense the atmosphere. During, uh, during those years, the Holy Week couldn't be celebrated because the image were uh, of the Virgin Mary and Jesus Christ were the object of iconoclastic attacks. And in this context, uh, it's interesting to see the electoral propaganda for this election in which civilians were encouraged to vote for the right party so that the Holy Week could be celebrated. In that context, during uh, that year, only one brotherhood dared to parade, to go out. Uh, the Brotherhood of La Estrella, a very, a very popular one. The rest of the Brotherhood, the rest of the 60 Brotherhood didn't go out, uh, not because of insecurity, in fact, but as a boycott to the Republic. This was distorted, this fact was distorted by Franco regime for years, promoting an, a narrative in which the Estrella, La Estrella, was the only brave one, the only one that had stood up to the Republic, including also a kind of paternalistic view, view of, the, of the Virgin. And in fact, it had been the opposite. It was the only brotherhood that was loyal to the Spanish Republic. And the fabrication, the construction of the story was so extreme uh, and arrived so deeply that today, if you ask a civilian about it, the most widespread history is the fake one. The second uh, paradigmatic case of reappropriation of historical discourse has a this protagonist uh, to Gonzalo Queipovellano, an army general that became the Franco's uh, executioner in the, in the south of Spain, a responsible of near 40,000 civilians' uh, deaths. Keipo understood perfectly that the popular devotion, um, the, pop, the popular devotion to uh, the, the religious images was the most powerful weapon of control. So as soon as the rebels won the war, he dedicated to pay the renovation of churches and financing the creation of new brotherhoods. As part of uh, this strat his strategy, uh, he paid also the construction uh, of the new church uh, for the city most famous region, La Macarena, which is located in the in a worker neighborhood. Actually, La Macarena neighborhood was known as the Moscow, Moscow of Seville during the war because of its great resistance. Well, the site uh, chosen by K. Podellano for the construction of the new church was exactly where the Bar Cornelio was located, a meeting place for anarchists and communists. The choice obviously wasn't random and he, know, uh, he knew perfectly that he had to erase all traces of opposition using, in this case, the image of the Virgin as an instrument because the, in the image of the Virgin was, uh, the, the, the Virgin was the nexus of, for all the neighborhood. The position of the church wasn't random uh, either as it was placed with its backs, uh, its back to the neighborhood and its facade, facade facing the Arc of La Macarena, an old gate uh, in the city wall that was used as a triumphal arc. From then, La Macarena was no longer the working class neighborhood and became the official brotherhood of the regime. Well, when Capo died in, uh, 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 and in the middle of the century, he was buried in one of the chapels of the Basilica, where he rested until 1st of November uh, of this year, two months ago. Until then, the body was still there receiving worship and honors. And the most serious aspect of the issue is that the conservative sex sectors have opposed the removal of the body. In, in, in other words, they uh, they were denying the law, the law of historical memory. We we will see uh, the movement, uh, the, the moment when the, the body is removed 
at down and we will hear capos rel relative shouting viva capo and how the granddaughter of the of some uh, reprisal of the of the civil war answer reciting the, all the names of the people killed by capo i don't know if we can we can't see it. yeah The, the video is is um, uh, is really long, so uh, we have to to be quickly. And but, but you can imagine how sensitive was the moment uh, for me also because I live like uh, so the uh, one hundred meters away from the, the this church, and and it was really it was really hard the moment, and really important for all the nation at, at the end. And. Uh, after these two cases, I think that it's important to talk about this today, no? nowadays. I would say that it's important to talk uh, about the, uh, the, the memory because nowadays Holy Week is a popular expression that is growing year by year while the churches are empty. No? Society is uh, demystifying uh, the Holy Week of, of Seville and the South of Spain contradicting the narrative that the dictatorship tried to impose. I think that it's crucial to remark that uh, despite being a read promoted by the Catholic Church, the Holy Week and its devotion, it's a phenomenon that has survived thanks to the excluded groups, uh, groups of society. A civilian research, uh, Pedro, G. Romero, Pedro G. Romero, Say that uh, are those that the power try, tries to expel of the city, Jews and converts, gypsies, delinquents, prostitutes, and homosexuals, the, uh, the builders of its more powerful urban imaginary. And indeed, in every brotherhood and confraternity, there are homosexuals who don't hide it, uh, who have, all, have always shown their sexual orientation and have been perfectly accepted. Uh, this is explained by the fact that homosexuality was punished and persecuted in Spain until uh, the democracy, when the uh, when the, the democracy arrived. No? And before that, all those exclude uh, minorities found in that cultural and social framework of religious brotherhoods, the perfect opportunity and the perfect space to feel part of a group, to feel integrated into society. Uh, until recently, uh, this uh, didn't uh, leave the interior of each brotherhood, but fortunately, a counterculture and vanguard um, movement is being generated. These movements are vindicating the traditional religious figures, especially the Virgin Mary as a, as a queer icon. And this is happening in a society that is still very Catholic, but also one of the most tolerant and inclusive in Europe, according to all the studies. Of course, traditional movements have uh, arisen that rejects this unification. Finishing with the, with the last uh, slide, uh, I think that it's important to say that uh, this the signification is not new at all. It's a process made possible by several figures who in a critical period for the country, like now also, are trying to readjust the symbols that the fascist uh, dictatorship had appropriate during the civil war. The permanence in the, in the urban shape, in the form of the occupied void represent uh, that we saw in the beginning, uh, represent from my point of view, the proof that the public space, space and architecture 
represent the permanence of the civil power and also prove the importance of getting rid of cliches and uh, prejudices when considering, for example, the folklore as a nationalistic expression. Uh, it's, I think it's our responsibility also to know how to read the new popular codes and also to calibrate the resignification of symbols uh, adapted to these timeless formulas. And uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Javier. Um, excellent uh, both talks. Um, I invite you and uh, Isabel for our, let's say, our discussions to the audience. What I propose to Javier and Isabel, I will make, um, let's like say, one, two questions as a point of departure for them to react while you are, the audience can actually uh, warm up with their questions and um, and then we'll open after this each of our guests from each of them, we'll open the discussions to, to everybody, no? I mean, to to welcome questions from the audience too, if you agree. I have to, I mean, oh, I had the privilege to this to meet uh, Isabel and Javier uh, last week. So I had the chance to prepare one, at least one or two uh, questions, but I completely changed the questions that I prepare because uh, those two, I found really new intersections on the, on what you presented today. You both, are so wonderfully showing or very convincingly that architecture, politics, and religions are really tied in the, both contexts. No, I don't want to expand to, let's say, the whole Spanish uh, context, but at least on those two that you presented, it's very clear and in these two specific contexts. And um, this can create a quite of resonance to maybe other members who, or participants who are here today. And through your approach, I mean, through your presentations, your works, we learned that uh, there is a kind of uh, use of the idea of critical heritage, uh, um, while trying to challenge established and dominant narratives in architecture studies, as I see it. My question is very, like, is a provocation to two of you. Um, while I see that both of you are very, uh, working on these questions, the, while the work from Isabel um, considers the solid impact of the infrastructure and how this change, the, the social uh, transformation and the social aspects, we, and the so-called ephemeral occupation and the ephemeralities, uh, <laughs> the known build, um, let's say, traces, we see the very opposite in the case of Javier. From the ephemeral, <laughs> there is a direct impact in the solid, in the build, no? I was wondering if, how do you see this? Uh, let's see, how, how do you react to this proposition, right? One starting from the very solid, Isabel shows like, these dams, the hydroelectrics, really strong impact on the environment, and then how these create very nuanced but powerful social change. We could see through the Javier's presentation the very opposite. How do you react to that? Would like to start. I don't know if uh, uh, Isabel, if, if uh, uh, may I uh, start? Please. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, I, I think, thank you, Daniela, for, for your question and for your provocation. I think that it's, it's really, it's really helpful to, to uh, the, the question because of uh, it helps to, to, to think about uh, this contra position. I think that, uh, uh, yes, I, I absolutely, I, I agree with you that there are uh, the two, the two really uh, very different situations that uh, explains how the dictatorships try to um, 
uh, I don't know, arrive to all the scales, you know, from uh, this territorial uh, control to the little canopy that um, protects uh, uh, the, the Franco little figure uh, and body. And, and, and I think that the, uh, from the point of view of the female occupation, um, I think that the people um, were really uh, brave and, and uh, in its adaptation to a new order. For example, there are a huge of uh, a huge number of families that were uh, moved from the urban areas to the rural ones uh, with all this new architecture that that Israel show us. And they uh, export and transfer all the its traditional uh, ways of live of uh, live the, the public space to this new uh, scene. No, so I think that it's 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 also helpful to rethink the paper or, or the yes the protagonism of the arch of architects that I think that at the end is is uh, lower than uh, what is we have we usually think no. I think that the, the people have a, a powerful weapon. There is the adaptation, and, and at the end, a, this control is, is not so effective throughout the, the, the architecture, but a, with a, a, by other, other strategies and other ways. I, I don't know if, um, yes, for example, I, I think that in the occupation of the public space in, in Seville, I don't know if, if Isabel can. Uh, share with us uh, uh, other ways of occupying the public space in, in Madrid, for example, on it in, in, this, in these new areas. Uh, but, but yes, the adaptation, I think that it's, it's crucial, have been crucial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with, with Javier and, and, and well, thank you also, Daniela, for the provocation, because as, Dan as Javier said, um, I think it allows us to to think about this and to think about the the way we 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 tell these these kind of stories because um, I think for example in my case um, it is possible to to tell this story all the way around because uh, one of the one of the 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 objectives of the regime of the regime with when when they were like trying to transform the country was to create this new society and and like they they managed to 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 link all the parts and try to um, to make like this new economy by this new uh, society and uh, all of these with this new landscape. So they were merging all these parts at the same time. So I think, for example, in this case of the rural environment, it was mm, kind of a consequence, but it, it was uh, it was not just the consequence because it was something that they were looking for from the first time, from, from the first minute of these projects. It was this aim of um, building a new society. So this social consequence maybe is not a consequence, is part of the project. And, and well, I think uh, in this way, it could be uh, tell like the other way around, uh, starting from the people that were moved to, to, to these places from all over the country, the people that was uh, moved also from their their towns because their their towns disappeared um, because uh, their towns were floated or something like that. So it is possible maybe to tell the story about this uh, social uh, like new uh, social infrastructure and to have like the um, like the dams and all of that like in in a second in a second plane for example I think uh, it's it's something good to to reformulate like the ideas. Yes, absolutely. I, I don't know, Isabel. I have a question uh, to, for you. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, uh, yes. Thinking about the the this uh, like the this centuriation that uh, Franco tried this new order also for the territory. I think uh, as um, um, thinking about the, uh, the nowadays situation in Spain, uh, in which each region, each community uh, develop its own uh, territorial planning. Do you think that it's um, 
these new tools that we have in, in Spain of, uh, to, to plan the, the territory, uh, these plans are effective because I, I think that um, I, I don't, I, I don't um, want to say that uh, I found all these these the, these Frank or regime plans effective, but but it, it, it was I think. And nowadays we we don't. Uh, it's really hard to to uh, diagnostic to to uh, check out uh, how is uh, w which is our di direction as a country now in the in, in this um, in this area or in this plan in this territorial plan. I, I don't know if, if I explain well, but the idea yeah. is like. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, I think. Mm, I, I don't also want to say that it was maybe more effective, but I think that uh, like having the national picture was useful in this in this frame to try to um, to 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 organize how it should work in the in the sense that um, uh, well, for example, uh, they count on all the resources, all the natural resources on the territory, and they were like trying to use them in, in a more effective way. Uh, it didn't uh, matter where they were, they were located. So they, they the, the national country as a whole, not, not uh, really mattering where they uh, were like uh, making this project. So, Mm, well, I think this should be more effective because uh, they 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 use like the waters from different places, mostly uh, regarding the water in Spain that is not uh, so like uh, that is not well like distributed. For example, they were using like in a whole network for all the country and trying to um, use the water from one place to another place. So I think this is more effective. I, I don't know if it's what. Are you were asking? But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. They they they, doubt they didn't matter about the people or the equilibrium of all the regions. So it's no. easier in that way. Obviously, but absolutely unfair. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, it is easier. But they were uh, kind of uh, destroying at the same time. For yeah. example, many villages, and it was not like a matter of fact um, and well it was uh, surely it was effective but uh, the consequences and also the ecological consequences today are also um, kind of uh, important to to yeah. consider yeah <laughs> they are on the even the consequence on the national level and beyond the national levels reaching all the borders i wanted to pass it on to frederic who has a, a hand Frederic. Hi, um, thank you very much. I really like the, um, the differences of scale in the reordering of, of the space and the territory um, during the Franco period. And I have a question about the, um, the participation and maybe also the role of architects. And I think in Isabel's case, maybe of regional planners or in both, both of your cases in urban planners, in this reordering of space and in this political action, for example, um, like in Isabel's case, um, about the these new villages and the the new houses and these cultural centers and the churches who were built, who actually designed that? Who 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 built it? Was it the settlers themselves, or um, and and how do you what would you say about the role of these architects and planners? And the same goes to Javier about if I understood it right um, that they replace these um, these places of opposition by by the church, right? This was the this was the story. And um, who who built this church? And what how would you assess the work of these architects? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, uh, maybe I can start now, Javier. Um, well, in uh, in the case of the, the these new villages, um, uh, they were like um, they were designed by one by more by 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 one of our, our like famous architects in Spain, like for example to say so, uh, Fernández del Amo or de la Sota, for example, and many others. 
um, that um, it has been, this question has been uh, really um, deeply standing in Spain uh, from this situation of the um, of the new villages and uh, its its urban structure uh, the domestic scale the analysis of the of the houses of the because it was like a, a period that was uh, like used to um, to make some improvements in the uh, in the Spanish architecture to um, to use like modern tools um, because these new villages are considered in Spain kind of um, the first time in which uh, modern architecture was like uh, tried in these uh, rural areas and um, like all these um, for example in the south of Spain they they have like all the the, like the same kind of um, structure of the of, of the towns and with these like white houses and well this has been like deeply studied in Spain and uh, well of course they designed all the urban structure uh, and also yeah the domestic scale and I think about your question of uh, who built the, the the houses itself or the buildings itself uh, I think uh, I have seen some 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 videos of uh, the Seltzers um, building like their their own houses uh, of course uh, uh, like following the this uh, the directions of these architects, uh, no, let's say. Yeah. Yes, Frederick, uh, thank you for the question. I, I think that in the case of Seville, the architects, the the uh, the architects that um, build uh, all these uh, new uh, churches and uh, new urban spaces were architects that uh, were really related with the with Cape Llano, that, that became a sort of uh, little uh, kin, a local kin. No? So all the, the good, um, the architects that uh, had been, uh, had received an, an education, uh, more um, contemporary education, uh, being like in, in the in these uh, educational atmospheres of the uh, modern movement uh, were uh, out of Spain. So uh, we are like we, we don't um, we don't have a good exa good examples of architecture uh, in, in these in these new churches uh, in, in uh, it's, a, it's a huge difference between the uh, some examples that Isabel showed us and and the local case of, of Seville, and it's uh, it's really it's a it's a it's a pity because uh, yes, uh, the, as you see, as you saw, no, the the charts of La Macarena has a language that was uh, absolutely anachronist. Uh, anachronic, no? Of the, it was built in the in the fifties, and it seems like the sixteenth uh, uh, language, architectural language, no. So I think that the, this uh, this paper, the paper of the, the role, the role of this architecture, uh, were absolutely secondary and, and has no. Nowadays, these churches, everyone sees like a nice scenario, not just a, like an architecture that we we feel like our architecture. So yes, everyone know that it's, it's a fake. Yeah. <laughs> so if I, I'm sorry if I replied to it, but um, so do I understand you both right that you say like the architects were mostly executors and were not really uh, active political agents or? Uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the case of, of Seville, I think that yes, it was just like who seen the, the, the project that Cape Polellano in this case or the regime uh, ordered. It, they didn't have a, a really a, a voice, a proper voice in, in, the, in the design. In, in the case of Seville, at least. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's not the same as, as Israel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in the case of the new villages, um, well, um, I think that uh, like they received kind of 
uh, when I was doing this downscaling, when, when, when you get to, to the sectors, um, I think that it was, uh, in this case, yeah, an organism called uh, the, the National Institute of Colonization, who made uh, like um, all the, the structuring of the territory. They were um, settling like the new towns uh, with some, um, with some, um, kind of um, ideas related to the distance to the plots to the distance between the the towns so like they i think they choose the points and then they gave the like the this 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 is structured to the architects to design the new the new towns and and the new towns are uh, are very different in their structure because uh, each one of these architects uh, designed uh, was 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 using this as a tool for new rules of design for new uh, improvements so it was kind of good architecture in Spain but I think they were just uh, like uh, working in this phase of the of the of the of the project just when they were uh, up to this scale of the new town and the domestic scale. If I can just jump to uh, as a comment to Isabel, I see a lot of resonance with Brazilian context in those years. I mean, more like six and later mid, uh, the times during the military regime, the dictatorship in which we are going to have uh, around um, yeah, 300 new cities being built um, in those years, in which the so-called architecture professional, it won't be a homogeneous body. No? You, we are going to have architects, trained architects, working for industry, for companies who are going towards the West, you know, so hold this colonization process, a political process towards the center, towards the inland, as part of a, a, using architecture as infrastructure, roads, dams, and the, the new settlements. Um, then you have all different types of, let's say, of what we could call the, the practice of the architect. And those who could have, like, say, a critical position to that were either in exile or disappeared or were in a situation that could have limited space to a voice um, in this type of context, as le at least I would say for the Brazilian case, but I could feel that there is a might have a resonance on that on that level as well. So that could be interesting. And to 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 jump into into a question, both of you are using uh, the, the filmic, uh, let's say medium, no? films as, a, as an important source for your for your narratives, for your arguments. And in, in both cases, I mean, you also use image from the 60s and also, if, if I'm not wrong, please correct me, Javier. I saw you have also recent uh, videos, but also maybe from that period. But one interesting thing is that there is this use, this instrumentalization of the video as an educational purpose for the masses, you know, like training the masses for a specific uh, instrumentalized purpose, you know? And what we could also see is that um, if we bring this to the question of how the church used this as the videos, also as an instrument for, for also reproducing certain permanent practices, maybe at that time and also nowadays, how, how would you see it, Javier, for example, in your specific case, these more nuanced uh, celebrations and use also of the visual material to reproduce uh, and reenact certain uh, power structures of uh, of the church, even with a new type of social, let's say, uh, even if we change, but it's also a way of the church to make use of uh, of this medium, right? How how do you position? It's more a question to Javier in this sense, but. Uh, uh, Isabel is welcome to 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 react on this uh, filmic medium as a source. Yes, ab absolutely, absolutely. The the, the media uh, was crucial uh, for the the, the uh, for the victory of of the of the revolts 
and it's an element of communication but and also an element of power that's it's obvious no but uh, the use of the tv of the novel news that was was named like this uh, was um it's it's um uh, a document a, a really uh, a super useful um instrument nowadays to to reproduce yes the, this this course of the of, of power and uh, nowadays the the local audiovisual production in Seville is huge and very intense and it's controlled by the church uh, also nowadays and uh, is if, if you see the the ways of of this uh of communication in these uh, little clips of these repossessions uh the ways in in which they uh, trying to express uh these manifestations are uh, is really similar from from the 60s or the 70s one so yes it's it's true that uh, it's it's incredible how uh, also um, the church uh, has adapted um, their uh, language its language uh, to the new um, uh, media uh, worldwide uh, scene, but uh, keeping all these uh, the main um, gestures uh, of the traditions uh, uh, unchanged. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, to jump in uh, um, about uh, like this uh, filming uh, tool. Uh, yeah, I think, um, as, as Javier has said, these nodal films were intended in two ways, like in, in, on the one hand to, um, to show the world uh, what the Spanish um, regime was doing and, and to show like the power of uh, Spanish technique and engineering to the world to uh, try to get out of this uh, isolation uh, on the first uh, period of the, of the regime, for example. Uh, and then it was also used as a tool inside the country to like to educate people and to show like the improvements they were doing for their own country. Um, and, and today I think it's, it's, a, it's a huge tool for research because um, um it is it is it is uh, amazing to see how they were filming all these situations and they were showing uh, to the people and it is uh, useful like to i think for this um kind of uh, of way of seeing this this period from these cultural meanings it is it is uh, amazingly useful uh, because it is go it goes beyond um for example uh, the oops, it's an automatic light and it <laughs> goes on. Um, so uh, what I was saying, like, um, it is like a complementary tool for the, like, for the, for the plants, for example, for the master plants. Uh, it is kind of the hard and the soft part of this uh, situation that you can join and make like a, a huge lecture of like a big picture of all the situations. So I think it's it's fundamental for anyone researching this this period. And, and also, I think that analyzing the, these scenes uh, used by, by Nodo films, uh, they are totally nostalgic, nostalgic scenes and atmospheres. And the risk, uh, I think, it is uh, that people nowadays see them uh, not from the point of view of the research, uh, as, as we see it, but um, these documents, mm, yes, are, are, I think there is there are risky for uh, because people think idealize that moments. So because of they they were uh, expressing an, an, an idealistic uh, uh, scene, and nowadays, if you don't uh, context, uh, if you don't uh, draw the context of, of these novel films. Uh, are really are really risky, <laughs> I think. Mm, yeah, and I I I know cases uh, of people from here that say no, the Holy Week of the fifties were uh, more beautiful, more authentic, and 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 so on. 
just uh, uh, to the, the, the normal things, you know? So yes, as everything <laughs> need context. <laughs> Well, no, thank you. I mean, I, I don't see any other question, but I I have uh, one more um, to make. I mean, is there? Oh, Lisa, yes, you are welcome. Because otherwise, I continue here. <laughs> I move on. Plenty. I have plenty of questions, but please join us. Hi. Um, it's all good. It's not really a question. It's just an observation. Something that came to my mind because um, Javier's presentation um made me think about rituals and the power of rituals and the power of images in imagery in rituals and also like you asking about film then thinking about isabel's um um topic because she she told us that um the 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 films that she uses like um kept reappearing or, or appeared in in the week like weekly in the in the cinemas right in the weekly news so, so also this kind of creates a ritual through images of um, demonstrating like weekly um, the the success or the um, the progress um, of the country. So this is like a like a ritual of progress, while this this chat ritual is like a ritual that kind of goes back in time. So this is just an observation. It's not really a question. I just um, thought this was interesting to think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. great. Uh, I think I wait, wait, wait a minute, Isabel. I just think maybe if Frederick, do we want you to, to jump in and then the and then Isabel and Javi can can react? Yeah, only if Lisa is okay with that. But I was I was actually thinking when you were talking, um, how about counter images? Because I think we as researchers, if we rely only on the of course, I don't. I don't assume that you rely only on it. But if we rely mainly on propaganda material, it's it is super risky. And I mean, we know that also from the working on the German National Socialism that um, we we have to put it in context. But we also have to find somehow counter archives or counter images or counter films. <laughs> I don't know if this exists, and maybe. This is connected to Lisa. Do you do you see like a potential of counter images or counter archival sources? Yeah. So, um, well, I, I totally agree with you, Frederick. And and um, for example, in my case, um, I'm using kind of these uh, propaganda sources to make like this inventory of the whole situation of the country. But my aim is to use uh, like uh, these counter sources or these cultural sources, like to 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 complete this story because I think they are they are fundamental. Because uh, for example, I have uh, I have um, I have searched about this and I have found uh, some some sources uh, some for example songs some um, like um, domestic movies uh, some uh, poems uh, those kinds of things that were uh, done with the, uh, were done by the people affected by this progress in this case or that were um, for example um, that needed to abandon their their orig original places and and they uh, make a, a culture of, uh, of uh, remembering these places and for example they are uh, joining today in these places or near these, pa these places to remember uh, to to celebrate to 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 remember their, their like their families for example and I think this is uh, this is completely necessary to to be added to this this whole picture because of course if you rely only on these propaganda sources uh, you are uh, you are repeating like this story and you are only framing a part of history and and not getting to all these cultural meanings that that is what i am trying to do for example so of course yeah. yes I, I absolutely uh, absolutely agree and i think the case of, of, of for example the, the romantic travelers who visit seville in, in my case at the end of the 19th century is paradigmatic uh, they were all men, 
and, uh, and they describe uh, a totally fun, exotic, dynamic city. And if we, you read the, the, uh, the, the, the narration of the woman travelers, uh, of the end of the of the nineteen, which have been silenced uh, for centuries, silenced for centuries. Seville at the end of the nineteen was dirty, full of uh, prostitutes, and no, not at all uh, desirable. No, so I I agree with you that it's very risky, and and in my uh, PhD thesis, for example, I warned uh, at the beginning that the sources of information from which this cartography. Uh, are based, are suggestive and, and uh, biased because I, I translate into graphs what uh, the locals chronicles tell us. It's an ephemeral city, but it's a partial city. So I, I think that you uh, you are absolutely um, yes. It's it's really it's really important to remark it and to to be aware about uh, the, the the documents that we use. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, it also already responded to my question I had before. So thank you very much, uh, Elisa and Frederic, for jumping and creating. And I, I think Lisa's uh, point or comment on the question of rituality, it's also very permanent, uh, per pertinent as well on the question of, of the rituals and the spatial practices and also the instruments, uh, the instrumentalization of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of um, the use of different uh, media to, to promote certain aspects that once it's embedded in a social practice you don't really feel anymore that they are impositions that's 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 the the nuanced but also very powerful uh, tool that i think that lisa also wants to stress in the in the, in the sense of uh, of repeating the images and the and the and the rituals of watching the scenes and so on. And once it's embedded, as in the case of Javier's uh, uh, rituals of the process of the cortejes, once it's embedded in the social memory and the identity of the people itself, you identify with that practice. And then you think that it's, uh, that's part of a, of a collective memory and you're not really already visualizing on the first moment that there are political purposes and 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 uh, impositions of ideas and um, also of oppressors of dominating views and so on and so forth so I think it's uh, it's very pertinent I would like to ask is there something else that uh, you Javier has as a question to Isabel vice versa is there another question from the audience to our our guests it's our last chance Isabel, do you have, uh, I know you've been, I mean, very close uh, colleagues and also, um, let's say, uh, peers in discussing, and we are very grateful that you are sharing with us your own discussions that you've been having on a private, let's say, individual level as well. Uh, and it's fantastic that to, to have the two of you with us today. Would you like to say uh, something else or a reaction, final words? Yeah. Well, maybe I would like to, to ask Javier, because uh, I have seen um, these cartographies that he has uh, made of these rituals of occupation of the space that I think they are amazing. Uh, and I would like to ask you about your methodology on doing these cartographies, how, which, is, which are your tools uh, to, to do this, not just like your technical tools, tools but uh, how you, um, how you um, think about this, how you think about what to represent, and, and especially when thinking about the, like, the cultural meanings or the non, like those things that are no usually song, uh, how do you represent them? Yeah, Th thank you, Isabel. <laughs> uh, I, I think that, that um, it's, uh, I have like a two different uh, sensation of, of feelings because I, I, I think that uh, has been a, like a, a, a great effort uh, to achieve this, uh, all these cartographies. And I think that the metallurgy about 
is is not the two the principal tool is the AutoCAD and, and like uh, like uh, an artwork uh, um, uh, manual, no, that is some more than than a digital work. But I think that um, there are many many things that can't be represented in in uh, in two two dimensions. So uh, and a church like this, uh, I need uh, it's mandatory to to complement these categories with a, 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 a reflection and other tools that uh, helps to uh, uh, create a context, as I said before. Uh, for these categories, because drawing just the void of the uh, urban shape, I, I know there is like really a, a reduction of way to 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 understand the city. So uh, in itself, these uh, these traces doesn't uh, don't represent or express nothing more than than a shape. With its context, with the, uh, um, with uh, describing and analyzing other facts that, uh, as you said, well, uh, are surrounding the, the, the this manifestation, we can understand. But uh, as a methodology itself, uh, that doesn't work. <laughs> uh, it's hard to to say, but but it, it's it's like thinking. But in the in the PhD thesis, I. I did. I, I did the, the whole the whole work. No, uh, 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 talking about what Lisa uh, um, um, uh, told us before, I, I think that all the brotherhoods have um, their social networks and and express, for example, their political opinions uh, through them. And it is dangerous because uh, we consume the networks sometimes without a critical eye, you know, without a critical point of view. And it's like everything else, but also the, uh, the collective memory that is being generated in nowadays is part of a contemporary manipulation in this new platform. You know? So we have to be aware also with this. And, and it's just because it comes to my mind what Lisa uh, said. Um, I I I I, ha I would like to to ask Isabel if uh, if do you think that your uh, process of uh, research um, is uh, accurate as uh, is um, adapted specifically to the case of Spain, or you could uh, export it to other countries and to other territories that. Uh, has passed uh, through the same uh, process, political process as, 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 as the case of Spain, for example. Uh, could your um, research could be adapted to, for example, Germany, or is just adapted to the case of Spain? Um, yeah, mm, well, <laughs> it's a difficult question um, because I'm not really into the sources that I could find in, for example, Germany or any other country. But um, talking about this part of this inventory and mapping of uh, these situations and, and, to, and, 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 and then to try to read over them, I think it's something that could be a sport to uh, many other uh, actions because um, it's just a way of, of, of thinking about what happened and then to try to uh, um, like to read again to uh, like the, the, the overlapped meanings. So I think it, it could be um, probably uh, exported to other places. But uh, for example, in this Spanish case, um, like uh, I said, I use these propaganda tools like to make this whole picture, the, like the whole inventory. And I think uh, it, it was useful in this case, but I'm not sure if it would be easier in any other cases, because as in this Spanish case, they were, they were always trying to show the world what, what they were doing. So uh, it is easy for me to find it right now, but maybe in other cases it's not the same. So. I think it depends on uh, on that, but uh, just talking about the methodology, I think yeah, it could be it could be export to to other cases. Yeah. 
I agree, and I encourage you to study. <laughs> yeah, for the next thesis. Yeah. <laughs> for the next thesis, the second one. <laughs> I think it's an excellent way of, may say, concluding the, the session and giving us uh, future fo thoughts for, for, for other events and continue to consider how we could um, imagine um, through these methods and through this approach, how are the context and circumstance uh, uh, one can learn from each other. But I thank you both very much, all of you, to especially to both of you, to for accepting our invitation. All of you for being here. Just a few words, please don't go away. On the um, our future, our next CCSA talks, it will take place on the thirty first of January. You can see here our post, um, and it will be in German language. Um, but you are all very welcome to come and listen and also make questions in English. We will also reply to, to you. So the CCSA talks, as you see, it's both uh, combined sessions in English and German. And we are going to have um, Oliver Elza, who is here with us today, moderating this session. He will welcome um, uh, Birte Leptin who is a fellow at the Foundation Wüstenroth, and the discussions will be on the founding director, Heinrich Klotz Files, and um, on the ARCA, the founder of the, um, the founding director of the Deutsches Architektur Museum, the translated German architecture museum in Frankfurt, but the questions of the archives uh, and um, the collections in the archives and the act protocols of you are all very very welcome to attend and we'll continue also the last session will be in february again in english then you are also very welcome to discuss the publication uh, by one of our fellows uh, co-authorship by anna maria meister with this huge group from princeton on the radical pedagogies so that's it for 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 tonight and we wish you all uh, good uh, holidays, Christmas holidays. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye. Yeah.